Well, howdy for part two of paper making to all you paper fanatics out there. As you can see, it has dried and I have taken them out of the molds. This is the piece that was in our uh, office tray, screened office tray. And that is the bottom of it that was up against the screen. As you can see, it is very, very textured. There were ridges in that tray, and so it has the little ridges, which adds to the texture. It's up in it. It's not as bright as what it was when I put it on. I told you that the water would wash that down some. And you probably can't tell, or well, maybe you can. Uh, it is fuzzy from where I put those wool pieces of roving on it. So it has dimension, it has texture, it has character. Uh, it is a nice solid piece. You can hear it popping against my hand there. And uh, that's what a piece of homemade paper can look like. It can look like a lot of different things depending upon what you put in it and what you do to it. But that is what I made. And now we can do all kinds of things with that. We can cut it down. We can attach it in you know a bunch of you girls into journaling and stuff you can attach that as a pocket you can put it on a tag you can use it for an embellishment uh just all kinds of things now what i'm going to try to do now i've never tried to do this before so this may just plop and and just be awful but <laughs> we're going to find out if i can cut this I may not be able to cut it it might be too thick for this but if i can just take a little bit of the edge maybe not even all of that edge off of there with the cutter yeah it'll cut right through that that's pretty slick, okay. And raise the little thing up and get our little little pieces off. That eases that edge up just a little bit so it doesn't look quite so wonky on there. Wonky is one of my favorite words. A lot of the things I do are wonky. <laughs> and then we'll take a little sliver of that off of there so that it eases that edge up just a little bit it doesn't make it look quite as rough i don't mind having a little bit of texture to it but it doesn't need to look too terrible so we'll put this little edge in there and we'll take just a little bit of that off ease it back just just a touch see what this looks like here I think that helps it a little bit so it's not quite as rough looking you could use the scissors and totally trim it up nice and nice and straight if you wanted to now this tore just a little bit but not too much there See, that's why you when you flatten it out in the pan, you don't want to get it too terrible flat because you don't want it to be too fragile. But you don't want to um, leave it too thick either, or it'll be like cardboard. You've got to hit a happy medium with the with the texture on your paper. I'm going to ease that back just a little bit more if I can. I may need to just take the scissors to that rather than try to do that with a blade. Because I think I'm making matters worse with that. Let's let's find my paper scissors here. Well, you know how that goes. You got them, and then you don't. There they are. They're buried underneath everything else I got going on here. We'll just take just a little of that edge off of there. don't mind it being just a little rough but it doesn't need to be horrible there we go so that straightened it up some let's see maybe just a little more off there just a touch more there we go so that's looking pretty good now like i said you can do all kinds of things with this some of you like to paint chips. See, you can put that 
on a paint chip. You could glue down edges on it and make a pocket out of it. You can use it as an embellishment for a card. Let's say that's the front of a greeting card we've got going on there. And then you could put some lace, you could put some ribbons, you could put some stickers, you could put um, you know, all kinds of little embellishment things on it. You could put your flat back pearls on there, um, whatever you want to do. And that is a very interesting piece of Okay, I think I've got this thing working again. Good golly, I don't know what happened there. I think I lost my internet connection or something, but now we're back. Okay, now, as I was saying, you can take this and you can put it on this and make a pocket out of it. You can put that on the front of a greeting card and decorate it up and put your sentiment and all that kind of thing on there and some bows, flat backs, whatever you wanted to do on there and shabby chic her up. You can um, put it on. A piece of paper and make a card front out of it or make a journal part out of it or uh, a pocket uh, you can put it on a tag cut it down to fit the tag and then you can decorate it up with however you want to decorate it for a tag for your journal or for a gift or however you want to do that up um, here's a piece of this foam paper you can put it on the foam paper and then attach it to something give it a little bit more dimension give it a little more interest um, all kinds of things that you can do with it whatever your imagination can do for you but there is a piece of art paper homemade paper the next thing i've got for you are these little gizmos here 
These came out of our little molds that we had. Here's the one for the, the goose or the duck or whatever you want to call it. And all I did to get it out of there is I took a stylist and I just eased her around the edges of it, just picked at it just ever so gently, and it popped out because it was very dry. This has been sitting for 12 hours. And with this piece, when I've taken it out of the tray, all I did is I flipped the tray over and I ran the burnisher over the bottom of the tray and it popped right loose. So that's how easy it is once it's dry. If you try to do it and it's not dry, you're going to run into problems. Now, with these little pieces, what I like to do is take a knife and just ease the little flash parts off of it ever so gently you got to just be patient take your time with it wherever you see the little extra flash pieces ease them off of there and if you get too froggy with it you're gonna start losing pieces of your paper that's why I say when you put it in that mold, make sure that you just really tamp it down good and hard. That way it'll hold together better. But you see how I'm just taking the little flash pieces off of there so that we make this nice and trim. Get anything that don't look like a goose or a duck or whatever this thing is off of there. Goose, goose, duck. And just gentle it off of there. I don't like to take scissors to it. That just seems to be a little overkill for this. You're treating it a little rough if you go to taking scissors to it. The knife seems to get the job done. Once you get it all trimmed up, then you can paint them. You could use watercolors on. You can use acrylic paint. You can use um, color markers. It would work too. But this gives you an idea of trimming these things up. I'd like to get one at least done here. And let's see, what other stories can I tell you while I got you on here? Oh, if you haven't checked out my other site, you know, if you like old time stories about how us old folks grew up and things that I've been through in my life, you might check out my other channel. The uh, URL for it is in the description of this video, and that'll take you to my other channel whether my story times are. I've been doing that for a while. There's a lot of young people that seem to like hearing me tell my stories and of things that I've been through, and they're all true. Every one of them's true. Some of you'll say, oh, she's making that up. <laughs> Some of it I wish I was making up. And then my Etsy store's on there too and my dream catchers that I make on there and some of my soap. I see, I got a little too froggy there with that. I shouldn't have got so quite so rough with it. I might have to take the scissors to that beak around the edge of that beak there. Because if I beat it up too much more with the knife, I'm going to take the bird's head off. We'll be having him for dinner. Now the thing is though, if you do happen to make a boo-boo with this, it ain't no big deal. There's a couple things you can do. You can glue them back together. You can put a little water on it and let it sit for a while because it's paper. You know, it started out with water and it can end up with water. 
and that will firm it back up as long as you leave it alone and let it dry. Um, or if you absolutely wreck it, throw it in your next batch of pulp. <laughs> It'll be a redo. Okay. Hold him down. Hold still, Donald Duck. Get that flash off the back of your head. Then when you get this so that you're pretty happy with it, and the stuff that you're taking off of it, if it still looks a little rough around the edge, that's okay. I'll show you how to deal with that here in just a second. So I've about got him where I want him. Now there's bigger molds that aren't as intricate as this too. If you don't like to fool with this little intricate stuff. Okay, we're getting him whittled down here. That's not looking too bad. For somebody that ain't done this in about 30 years. Now, let me lay him down here. So you can see him. You see how he looks a little rough around the edges and stuff there. All right. Let me find my H2O bottle. There it is. A little spray bottle of water. And I'm going to spritz him. And then. Take your finger and you just rub it around the edges of wherever he's not smooth enough to suit you. And that water just pushes that flash right down. Try to get the knife under his chin there. Just smooth it down with the knife a little bit. Move the little tail down here some. Now his little foot's kind of delicate. So we'll be real gentle around his foot. Push that flash down. Come around the body. Push the flash down because it's wet now. Around that little bow on his neck. Push the edges down on that. Lay him down here flat. I'll pull some, uh, some more flesh off. There, that's a lot better there. And he's just looking handsome as all get out. Lord have mercy, Daisy Duck's going to come calling. There's our little duck goose critter. <laughs> I know he's not showing up worth a squat on that camera. Holy smoke. Let's see if I can get him up here where you can see him. We'll move the light a little bit and back and forth until I find the camera. There we go. But you can see he's got a little bow around his neck. You see his wings, his little foot. Bless his little heart. Now, he's going to need to dry because I wet him. Oops. Oh, duck took a tumble. There he goes. We'll lay him right down there. 
and let him dry. Now, when it gets dry, if there's still some flash on there that you don't like that you can't seem to trim off, hit him with the water again, scrape it down a little bit more until you're happy with what you got. I don't paint until I'm happy with what I've got trimmed up. And the reason being is you paint it and then you see flash on there that you don't like. And then you go to trimming on it and you chipped your paint up and then you got to paint again. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> one time is enough for me so you know let, let's just trim him up get him the way we want him and then we will deal with the rest of it so that's what we do there then we got our little Scotty dog and I'll, I'll do the same thing with him is just trim down all the flash little Scotty dog if I can get him up here where you can see him see he's got a little bow around his neck a little pretty feller ain't he and he's got a lot of flash on him. Now, when you put him, put your pulp in the mold and you go to working on it, I try not to leave a whole lot of flash. You know, I don't want to, when I put it in the mold, I don't want flash, you know, clear out to the edges and all such as that. I try to get it as close up to the mold as I can without getting into the mold itself with the pulp because if you push it in too far then you'll end up it because it shrinks in the mold as it dries and you'll end up missing the beak or you'll miss part of the bow or his feet won't be there when you're all done and if it dries and he's missing parts you pretty much have to just pull it out of the mold and put him back through the grinding process again and start over again with it because trying to add on to it after it's dry it just it doesn't hold up so leave a little bit of flash on it even though you got to do a little trimming you're better off than having to start completely over again the trimming really isn't that big of a deal you just have to go slow with it take your time be gentle with it Like I say, if it ends up just a little bit rough, you hit it with a little water, smooth her down. You'd be surprised what your results will be those little moles can still be found I, i'm not sure that that company is still in business anymore but i've seen the molds oh on ebay and different places uh, i don't know that the craft stores carry them anymore it's been eons ago since i bought those little molds i wish i had all of them that i had i had a great big box full of them but oh well you know you sell some you break some <laughs> move multiple times over the course of the years and life happens to you I had some great big ones I had a lot of the Dutch style ones with the hearts and all that, those were really nice for greeting cards. And years ago, I tried at one point to retire, and I was crafting and. Um, this is a lesson for all you young girls. Um, my family did not believe that crafting was an art. They felt like it was a waste of time. They didn't appreciate my endeavors or my talents. Not that I'm extremely talented by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure there's many of you out there that are more talented than me, but that's not to say that I'm totally 
without any talent whatsoever. And um, they kind of shamed me into giving it up and going back to work at a regular job. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. Although it didn't really turn out all that bad. I mean, I've, I worked out a lot of, of things with the money that I made on my job. But I lost a lot of years doing what I loved. And I always said that eventually I would retire and get back to crafting and doing what I enjoyed doing. And I have spent a lot of time over the years collecting things for when I retired to be able to craft. I don't have everything that I'd like to have. I don't think you ever can if you're crafting. But I got a lot of the toys that I wanted so that I could craft. And I retired about a year and a half ago, and I have not looked back. But my family's gone now. I am a widow. No kids. I raised a couple of young men, a stepson and a foster child. But they have long since gone on with their lives. And I just keep plugging along doing what I enjoy doing. But don't let anybody squash your dreams. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And that's what I did. Okay, I think I've got Scotty Dog pretty well under control here. Let me spritz him with just a little water so I can go around the edges of him and make sure that I flatten out as much of that flash as I can. Wasn't real happy about trying to come off of there, so we don't have a whole lot laying around. Let me get him all squared away here. A pretty little feller. You make a pretty embellishment on something. A little extra come off there. Smooth down this edge a little bit. Come over the top of his foot. Right up there along his chest. Smooth off his head. Back up here to his little ears. Okay, there's little Scotty dog. He's looking pretty cute. And he's a little damp around the edges, so we're going to lay him down there nice and flat. Let him dry, and he's ready to be painted as soon as he's dry. So I'll let him dry here for a few hours, and then. I'll come back and see what I can do by hitting him with a little paint. But that is how you make paper, ladies. And we'll put the light maybe back a little bit. Boy, I tell you what, that's got a heck of a glare on it, don't it? Woo wee. Okay, maybe. Well, that's not helping any either, is it? It was much better before. I don't know where I had it. Now that's somewhat better. You can see the green in it, in the paper. So, there you have it. That is paper making. 101 and 1.2. <laughs> I'll edit these up and have them all ready to go together so you can view it and see what, uh, what I was talking about. But like I say, sky's the limit on this. Um, it's not difficult to do little time consuming, but look at what you end up with. I mean, you end up with something ain't nobody else got. Uh, you end up with, with a product that uh, is 100% you. It's authentic, and you can decorate it up any way you want to. Use whatever 
embellishments and stuff you want to use. I've even seen people, and I have done it a, a few times, where you take, if you got little scraps of ribbon or little scraps of lace, and you chop them up real fine, and after you get the paper pulp, like I had it in the bowl, still wet, you just throw in the, the uh, little bits of ribbon, little bits of lace, and mix that into your pulp, and then put it out in your screen to dry. And that adds a little more texture to it. Like I said, try to stay away from anything that has a lot of dye in it because it will muddy up your paper if the dye goes to running in it. You're always better off to use some paint or watercolors. This has been really cool to use watercolors on because I use watercolor paper. Um, but, you know, whatever kind of uh, paint that you want to use on it, dyes, you can use RIT. Um, one thing I will touch on before I get off of here is using dyes with natural fibers. If, anytime you're using dyes with natural fibers, um, and I'm talking dyes, not paint, like a RIT dye, uh, there's uh, all different kinds of dyes on the market, but anytime you're using a dye, if it's a natural dye, even, you know, say you're using onion skins or you're using walnut hulls or um, dandelions, there's all kinds of natural things that you can use. You need to use a mordant. And a mordant is something that helps set the dye in the natural fibers, whether you're dyeing cotton, wool, um, paper, you know, what, any kind of natural thing. If you're using a natural dye, you need to use, well, not even necessarily a natural dye if you're using RIT or anything. You need to be using a mordant. It sets the dye. A mordant, I'm not sure what the definition of it is, but I can tell you what to use. Um, you can use pennies. Throw, throw a few pennies in the water when you put your dye in there. Um, you can use, uh, uh, well, pennies are copper. They got copper in them, but you can use any kind of a metal. You can use alum. Alum is something that you find on the spice shelf at the grocery store. Get you a tin of alum. Just put a little bit of that in your water when you're dyeing. Uh, it sets the dye, and it makes the dye hold up better. Natural dyes have a tendency to wash out of your natural fibers. Kool-Aid will also fade out. It'll, it will sun fade. Um, they're even using a mordant with Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid looks great in the beginning, but after time, you know, a year or two, uh, it will tend to fade. So, you know, if, if you are making something that you want to last for a long time, I suggest staying away from the Kool-Aid dyes. There are other dyes on the market that will last a lot longer. If you're using the uh, natural things like onions and dandelions and walnuts, be sure to throw some pennies or something in the water. I mean, you know, everybody's got a few pennies laying around in the bottom of a drawer in the couch cushions or something. <laughs> Just grab a few pennies and throw in the water, and that will uh, help strengthen the hold on your fabrics. So there's a little tip from me to you ladies. Um, we've been fixing to get some paper made today. <laughs> oh, Michelle is just roaring with laughter at this point. <laughs> you ladies all have a good day and we'll catch you later.